Yeah, welcome to the new module that is module number 9 uh, that is on introduction to automatic test pattern generation and ATPG algebra. So, in the last module that is module number 8, we have discussed two basic stuff that is when uh, you have to generate or have to test a stack at fault. So, what we do basically? We first uh, have to find out a pattern which can detect the, the stack at fault. That is you have to find out a pattern which can differentiate that the circuit is either having a stack at fault or the circuit is normal. Like for an AND gate if you want to test a stack at 0 fault at the output you have to apply 1 1 at the input. So, if the circuit is normal you will get 1 at the output and otherwise if there is a fault you will get 0 at the output. So, we have seen basically two procedures one is that is uh, the uh, random test pattern generation in which we apply one test pattern and then find out how many faults can be rejected by that. And then we have found out that there can be another procedure which is called the sim uh, sensitized propagate and justify approach. In sensitized propagate and justify approach what we do? We take a fault then drive it to a reverse value then we try to drive it to the output at some prime uh, primary output drive the effect to the primary output and then we want to uh, justify that for doing this uh, sensitization and propagation whatever is required at the primary inputs that those values we try to apply and verify that we can do that. Now, we have found out that uh, sense, uh, that uh, uh, what do you call the uh, random test pattern generation bit ATPG is, uh, is algorithmically simple or computationally simple than sensitized propagation justify approach because in the random test pattern generation based approach you apply one pattern and then find out more than one number of faults that can detect it in a general case. But in case of sensitized propagation justify approach you take one fault and find out a pattern, take another fault and find out a pattern. So, it may happen that two faults which can be detected by the same pattern you have to lead to two different iterations of the algorithm. But all faults cannot be detected by uh, all uh, uh, fault test patterns cannot be generated for all faults uh, in a circuit because some faults are easy to test and some are difficult to test. For easy to test faults we can go for the random test pattern generation approach, but for the difficult ones we can fi we will find out that the number of random test patterns applied and the uh, trials are much more in number that is you apply a random pattern do not detect a fault then you apply another random pattern you keep on doing it and this iteration has to go for a large number of times for the difficult to test fault. So, for that whenever we find that the random test pattern generation performance is degrading that is for a given new uh, random pattern no not much in the new faults are being detected by that. So, what we do that we go for the sensitized propagate and justify approach. Also we have seen one algorithm which is called the SQAP uh, that was in the last lecture that how can you differentiate or how can you demarcate in a heuristical manner that is maybe an approximate way which the easy faults and which are the difficult to test faults. For easy faults we di directly go for the random pattern generation algorithm and for the difficult ones we go for a, a sensitized propagate and justify approach. So, in this module that is module number 9. So, in module number 9 what we are going to do? We are going to see uh, automatic we will deal with automatic test pattern generation algorithm that is we will deal in details or in a formal way what how do you go for sensitized propagate and justify approach for test pattern generation. Before that in this lecture we are we want to see that uh, we want to see the basic introduction and also we have to see for some ATPG algebra that is if we are using uh, what do you call this. Uh, sensitized propagate and justify approach then this boolean algebra which is 0 and 1 may not suffice that is we require a higher degree algebra that is higher uh, uh, means um, uh, we will see that what I mean by that. So, higher order algebra may be required uh, in which case we will have 0, 1 and some other symbols which can help in sensitized propagate and justify approach. So, already told you that uh, some faults are easy to test and some are difficult to test. So, algorithm like SQAP actually gener generates this bin for you which is easy to fault and difficult to test. So, for sensitized propagate and justify approach ok for easy easy faults we go for random patterns and for the difficult we go for sensitized propagate and justify approach. So, in this lecture we will see the basics of ATPG and ATPG algebras and in the next lecture we will see the D algorithm which is the basic algorithm for sensitized propagate and justify based approach for pattern generation. So, now we will go for ATPG and ATPG algebras we will see why it is required. So, uh, basically a random test pattern generation is also can be called as automatic test pattern generation that is ATPG. But generally if you look at the random test pattern generation based algorithm then we do not generally generate a test pattern. What we do? I mean we generate a test pattern, but uh, I mean uh, very formally speaking we do not do that. So, what we do? We apply a pattern and find out how many faults are detected by this. So, this is called random test pattern gen random uh, test pattern generation I mean uh, random test pattern based testing kind of a thing ok. But if, if truly speaking what do you mean by a test pattern generation? Test pattern generation or automatic test pattern generation should be given a fault then find out any pattern 
pattern that can detect it or all patterns or more than one pattern can be that can detect it. Actually in sensitized propagation and justify approach we do exactly this way, we have a fault and then find out a pattern for doing it. So, we can say quote unquote that this is exactly automatic stress pattern generation or uh, and, and in some places in the literature we may not call um, random test pattern generation as automatic test pattern generation because they call it that we apply a pattern and then find out which faults are detected. But if you want to if you want to speak broadly then both of them that is a sensitized propagate and justify based approach and random test pattern generation approach both of them are automatic test pattern generation for the uh, uh, for detecting saccad faults or bridging faults any fault model you can take. Okay, but uh, if you go by the literature that uh, we call ATPG uh, for sen mainly sensitized, propagate, sensitized propagate and justify approach. Okay. So, this is what will be terminology we will be using. So, uh, till now exactly before we come to in details of ATPG, LTPG algebras and ATPG by sensitized propagate and justify. So, let me just uh, give you a quick view that the random test pattern generation and uh, what you call the sensitized propagate and justify are Boolean logic based test pattern generation. That is we do mathematically we have a circuit in fact initially when you are going for automatic test pattern generation or random test pattern generation we do not have this circuit. So, what we do is that we have the soft copy of the circuit or we have a, a program for the circuit or we have a event driven model of the circuit and then we try to apply algorithms to find out which test patterns can detect which fault. So, this is actually called Boolean logic manipulation based test pattern generation. But there can be some other physical or layout based or some other technique based stuff which can also detect fault. One very important part is actually called the thermal imaging. So, which is not a pure Boolean manipulation based stuff and in this case what we do? We require the circuit. So, in this case what happens? We take a circuit and then when the circuit has been fabricated then we take a thermal image. Actually we open up the uh, fabrication I mean uh, we, mostly the chips we have seen the black color or the with black color cover and all those things which are uh, layout in your computer motherboard or which is in your mobile motherboard or some places are actually package chip. So, if you do not have the package chip then we have the raw fabricated IC then we put it in the power apply patterns and then we take a camera and take we, we take the thermal image that is uh, based on the flow of currents and voltages in the circuit depending on the flow of current and the application of the voltage in the different parts of the circuit we get different temperatures. So, this temperature profile is recorded by a thermal imaging camera and then we analyze say for example, where we know that say there is a line that is going and say this line it is VDD somewhere it is connected and then this line is stuck at 0. Then what happens basically this line is connected to ground. So, there is a VDD, VDD that is the 5 volts or the 3.3 volts or whatever is your 1 logic 1 voltage and it is stuck at 0 means it is connected to ground. So, there is a short from a voltage VDD source to ground source. A lot of current, this current flow will be very very high and there will be a huge temperature in around this region. So, this then, then your thermal imaging will show some red spots in the some places of this faults. So, then you can easily point out that with regions wherever there is high amount of voltages, where there is low amount low I mean low uh, low uh, temperature, where there is high temperature based on different temperature profiling you can find out which areas there may be faults and which uh, there uh, area there may not be any fault. Like for example, as I told you if there is a short from VDD to ground then there will be a lot of current flow and then there will be it will be a very hot red hot spot will be there and your thermal imaging camera can detect this a very hot spot and there may be some defect in this area. So, you can pinpoint those faults. So, I mean that is actually saying the absorption may be higher when there is a stack at 0 fault and there is a stack at 1 fault which you have seen. Okay, because I mean fault areas generally do have uh, what do you call the maybe there is a stack at 1 fault over at this point and for some reason you apply a 0 volt at this line. So, then it will also have a source from stack at 1 to ground. Okay. So, you are applying a 0 volt means it is connected to ground kind of a stuff and the line is net is stuck at 1 means it is connected to VDD. So, lot of current flow will be there and there will be a hot spot. So, all the regions for the faults will generally have some hot spot kind of a stuff. So, if you have too many hot spots then you can find out that those regions may not be normal. So, this way also you can detect the faults. So, you can say that uh, this, uh, this is one uh, the, uh, totally different arena of fault testing I mean or test pattern generation which we have not yet discussed till now and uh, in fact we will not be also dealing with this in details because this requires a lot of uh, information about fabrication, physical phenomena and all this which is out of the scope of this uh, out of the scope of the course we are dealing with. So, for that it is basically covered in physical uh, device fabrication and all those things. But still to give you the idea that always test pattern generation may not be based on logic manipulation we have just quoted the example of thermal imaging. 
So, what is the advantage of thermal imaging? Thermal imaging is that you can directly have a dye, then you have a camera, then you can directly image out the thermal profile. So, you need not have to think about how currents are propagated to the primary outputs, how you can sensitize, because in case of a dye chip, you can or chip based on packet chip testing. So, you can only check the primary input and the outputs, control the primary inputs and check the primary outputs, but you do not have any control over the intermediary lines, because neither you can observe nor neither we can control. If you have to do that, you have to put additional circuit. But in case of thermal imaging, so there is some input patterns you give and whatever temperature profile you can directly observe with the camera. So, you need not think worry about or think about how I can generate a test pattern, how I can propagate it to the output, those problems are not there. But what is the uh, disadvantage? Again, the disadvantage is the time required or, or actually the expenses, the equipments required for them are very expensive. Thermal imaging, then you have to take the image, go for image processing and find out which is the hotspot that actually takes more time for testing and in fact, the equipments are very expensive. So, again there is a trade off whether you have to go for logical testing or thermal imaging based testing. So, there is a trade off and again some parts sometimes you go for thermal imaging and sometimes you go for logic manipulation, but uh, generally speaking for the first initial few rounds of silicon fabrication that when you are fabricating this chip for the first few rounds, then there may be lot of defects based on manufacturing based on design problems. So, what we can do is that we can go for thermal imaging or exhaustive type of test, but once you are in the flow that more or less the cheap yield is coming to be fine, there is no more design errors which is manipulating to the um, hardware errors and also once things are more or less stabilized, then you can go for basically in the moment we are going for this mass scale production, we generally go for logic. Uh, logic manipulation based automatic test pattern generation. And also for this course, this thermal imaging or this physical type of testing is out of scope of the course. So, we will again go back to our logical manipulation based testing. So, let us see why we require a higher order of what you call uh, order which is other than Boolean algebra, why do we require some other algebra for automatic test pattern generation. So, we know that Boolean algebra comprises 0s and 1s that is very well known. So, what we say, say for example, if you have an AND gate, so input uh, uh, input 1 I 1 is 1 and I 2 is 1. So, to detect a stack at one fault at the output, so it is very simple we write 1 1 and in the output we say that in normal case it is 1, fault case it is 0. But the 0 1 slash what we are writing over here is not a very good way or formal way of writing. We require another symbol for this because we have symbol for 0, we have symbol for 1. 0 means it is uh, ground and 1 means it is logic oh, logic high and 0 means logic low. That 1 0 what is this? It means that in normal case the circuit is 1 and the fault case circuit is 0. So, but this is actually not a very formal way of representing a uh, Boolean uh, uh, one algebra because we require some operation like say for example, we say 1 and 0 is equal to 0. 1 or 1 is equal to 1. So, we actually represent 1 symbol and A is 1 symbol where 0 and 1 are symbol. Generally in algebra we do not use something like 1 slash 0 or 1 slash 0. Then in the 1 slash 0, 1 slash 0 basically is equal to 1 slash 0 only because 1, 1 and 0, 0 if you are it, it is 1 and a 0, but generally this is not a very formal way of representing. So, we require some specialized symbols to represent this fact that is 0, 1. Similarly, if you have an OR gate, say another AND gate we apply 0, 0, then uh, if we can easily detect a stack at 1 fault over here by, because in normal case the answer is 0, fault case the answer is 1. But to represent these two stuff, we require some special symbols. So, that is the motivation of requirement of some kind of extra symbols or a higher order algebra in for ATPG generation. So, what is this? So, let us just have a six or we call them the Routes 5 val 5 value algebra is generally used for ATPG that you will introduce some more symbols and the motivation we have seen in the last slide that 1 0 0 1. So, this means 0 1 means circuit is normal voltage is 0 output is 0 and 1 that means circuit is at fault some kind of fault the answer we are getting is 1 and 1 0 means for the normal case that net or that output is 1 and 0 means because of the fault that net is appearing to be 0. But we require some special symbols to denote this because if you do not have special symbols then Boolean operations is not very formal. So, let us see what Roth's five value algebra or uh, this Roth has proposed some uh, algebra having more than two symbols. So, what are they let us see symbol 0 and symbol 1. So, 0 means basically 0 slash 0 the normal circuit it is 0 faulty circuit is also 0 like this is an AND gate say and this net is stuck at 0 say. So, if you apply a 0 over here what does it mean in a normal case where there is no concept of any fault then we say that this is 0, but in case of a circuit having fault this 0 implies that normal case it is 0 faulty case also it is 0. Let us apply a 0 over here for a stuck at sorry so stuck at 1 fault say target 1 for the output say 0. So, what does it mean? It means the normal case the circuit is 0, the fault case circuit is 0. Okay, that is a 0 here in ATPG implies. Now, 0 0 means the answer is 0, but if they just stack at 1 fault, the answer will be 1. So, we will put this as a different symbol as we will see. So, 0 0 means 0, normal case 0, fault 1 means 1 1, 1 means normal case also 1, fault case also 1. Sometimes we will use the term x. So, x, x means we do not know what is the value. 
Okay, correct. Like for example, I, I will. I mean, generally in a hardware, in a hard circuit, so if there is an AND gate kind of a thing, say, and I power it on, I power the AND gate on, I don't put anything at the inputs, or I put some inputs which I don't know, something like this. So we will slowly see when we will go to sequential circuits or flip flops, then we will really understand the meaning of X. X actually means that I do not know what is the value at this input or what is the value of the output. But we have to mention here very categorically that in case of circuits there is nothing called x, either it will be 0 or it will be 1. But we do not know because the circuit is not initialized properly, so that will be more clear when we will go for sequential circuit that is the circuit is not initialized properly. So, we do not know whether the value of the circuit is at present 1 or 0, we represent it by x. Okay, that is normal case also unknown, fault case also it is unknown. But we do not know that is, but the circuit is not having any value x in the, when the circuit is fabricated, it is either having 0 or a 1. But as the circuit is not initialized properly, we do not know whether it is 0 or a 1 at the time of initialization. So, we say that it is x, but we, but it is not in fact x, it is 0 or a 1 which we do not know. Okay. So, that will be more clear when we will deal with sequential circuits. Now, we come to the important paradigm called D. So, for example, we have seen the AND gate, so that is uh, 1, 1 and the answer should be 1, but if it is stuck at 0, the answer is 0. Okay, so, we say that we represent this symbol by D. Okay, then we say that 1, 0, normal case 1, fault case 0. You take a AND gate with 0, 0, the answer is 0, but a stuck at 1 fault, then the answer is a 1. So, this 0 and a 1, that is normal case 0, fault case 1, we represent it by D bar. So, basically, we have introduced three new symbols X, so whose will be more clear when you go for sequential circuit, but for the commercial circuits, D and D bar, which are the two important things which have introduced. D means normal case circuit is 1, fault case circuit is 0, and D bar normal case circuit is 0, fault case is 1. So, now we have two symbols, so now we can do all kind of uh, Boolean operations and whatever you can say using this symbols D and D prime. So, that will make our things more formal. So, like if we say that 1 and a 1, so example to illustrate Roth's algebra, so if we say that 1 and a 1, so the answer is D because for a stack at 0 fault, because normal case 1, fault case 0. 0, 0, uh, the, if the answer is 0, but if the stack at 1 fault, the answer is 1, we represent it by D bar. Like if the stack at 1 fault here, say, and we have a x. So, what is the x here means? The x here means when the circuit is initialized or it is coming from some combination cloud you can say which is having some sequential elements and all, the flip flops are not properly initialized. So, we have a value which is x. It is either 0 and 1, but we do not know what is that. Okay, so, and this line is stuck at 1. So, stuck at 1 means, uh, so had that the circuit been normal, so we would have got the answer kind of a 0, because if the circuit is 0 and a x, whatever will be the answer is 0. But for the fault case, we know that it is an x. So, basically we do not have any clear idea what is happening. So, 1 bit is x. So, we do not know whether the circuit is normal because uh, if the circuit would have been normal, we would have got the value 0. But if the circuit is having a stack at 1 fault over here, we do not know whether it is 0 or 1. We do not know because if x is 0, then the uh, answer will be 0 or 0. But if the x is 1 here, so the answer will be 0 and 1 and the fault can be detected. But as we do not know the value of x, you cannot have any idea of what is happening in the circuit. So, fault cannot be detected. So, basically we better write it as x. That is how we do. But, but if you could have written like a stack at 0 fault over here, then we could have said the answer is 0 over here because 0 slash 0. Because if the circuit is having a sorry. Okay, we cannot uh, directly go for that example right now. Like for example, I was saying that if there is a stack at 0 fault over here, then we can very easily say that the answer is 0 if there is the fault, even in the presence of an x. Okay, but uh, here they have to apply a 1 to detect the stack at fault, 0 fault. So, we could have said that the circuit is, uh, if the circuit is having a fault, we could have the, get the value of 0, but if the answer is 1 normal, then we can get a value of x, because 1 and a x is x because we do not know what is the value. Now, if x is 0, though this is 0 fault cannot be detected, but if x had been 1, then is 1 0, the fault could have been detected. So, there is no idea that if one net of an AND gate is x, we do not have any idea what is actually happening at the output of the circuit and faults cannot be detected. So, we have to better write it as, as an x. So, the value of x we need not worry much about right now, because it will be more clear when you are going to deal with sequential circuits. Now, as I told you, what is the motivation of having two or three more symbols like D, D prime and X? So, because we can go for very formal Boolean manipulation. Like for example, 1 and a D, what is that? So, what is D? D is basically equal to normal circuit 1, false circuit 0, right? So, now this one we end with 1. So, what is that? Uh, this one and with 1 means 1 slash 1, because normal 1, fault 1. So, the answer will be 1 and a 1 and 0. So, that is equal to D again. Okay, so, this is how 
So, you get this value. So, uh, 1 and d equal to d, 1 and d basically 1 and 1 0 because this is equal to d involves 2 computations 1 and a 1 that is equal to 1 and 1 and a 0 that is equal to 0. So, actually uh, the answer is uh, 1 slash 0 which is nothing, nothing but d. So, basically you could have also done the same thing using the algebra like uh, 1 slash 0 and 1 and you could have got the answer 1 slash 0, but that is not very formal because uh, in such type of slash oblique those things are not defined in any kind of a algebra. So, better we have used some symbols like we are again we are using say d prime. So, d prime is normal case circuit is 0, fault case circuit is 1 and we are ordering with 0. 0 means 0 slash 0 we are warring it. So, the answer is 0 slash 0 is or and 1. So, this is nothing but again d prime. So, it involves two computations 0 slash 0 or 0 and 1 0 or 1 because uh, d prime 1 0 here means uh, 0 slash 0 and d prime means 0 slash 1. So, one computation comprises these two and the comprises these two. So, okay, so this is what is being written and you get the answer. Similarly, you can get, get, get another direct answer for not of d prime is uh, d prime means 0 slash 1. If you invert it, you will get 1 slash 0, that is nothing but d. So, that is what they are saying. It again involves two computations, not of this and not of that. So, you get the answer. So, what basically essentially Roth has done, so he has actually introduced two symbols. We could have also done without those symbols, but as I told you, then it does not make your algebra very formal. So, that is why the importance of this symbols d and d prime are being used. So, I mean as I already told you that x is in logical operation then what do you mean? So, x slash 1 is x basically what do you mean by x? x means x slash x and 1 means 1 slash 1 that is nothing but x slash x that is equal to x. So, this is how it is there, but sometimes we could have also says that x slash x and 0. So, that is equivalent to x slash x and 0 slash 0 which is nothing but 0. So, actually the answer is 0. So, anyway we will bother more about this uh, what you call the x business in the sequential circuit, but anyway the idea why I want to emphasize over here is that if you have uh, these 5 operators in picture, so sorry 5 symbols in picture then what is the advantage we are getting? The advantage we are getting is that we can go for a very formal way of having the Boolean function manipulations. Okay? So, now we will go for the, the type of ATPG algorithm just have a look at it. So, there are 3 types, one is called the exhaustive uh, automatic test pattern generation that is for a given fault you have to find out all patterns which can detect it. So, how you can do that? There is no other way, but you have to apply uh, what you call call functional correctness that we are going we have discussed in the very initial starting in initial phase of our uh, testing lecture when we have said that to test a circuit we apply if the rain inputs we apply to the power n patterns and see whether the output conforms to the specification. So, uh, then it is very obvious that if there is a circuit with n inputs then and you apply 2 to the power n in inputs to test whether everything is proper or not, then obviously for a given fault you will be able to find out uh, which faults detect those. I mean uh, which are the which which patterns detect which faults and uh, a circuit is detected and, and, a, a tip and a, so in, if you are applying all to the power n patterns and everything is exhaustive and everything is very clear to us then what we can find out that if for a given fault which are the pattern it is detected uh, or for a given fault which are all the set of patterns which can detect it and also the other way around. So, that is actually called exhaustive test pattern generation kind of a thing that is for a fault you can find out which are all the patterns which are detecting it. But in fact for testing if you remember our earlier discussion on testing that we do not require all possible patterns for a fault. Our idea is for our idea is that for structural testing with a stuck at fault model for a given stuck at fault we have to apply one pattern and you have to find out that the fault is not there. Because our number of samples to be tested are very high and our test time in the ATE or automatic test equipment is very very less. So, we have to do as soon as possible. So, for a given fault we apply one pattern and we verify that the fault is not there and then quickly go for the other fault. So, we have to do it very quickly. So, exhaustive test plan generation is not a very good idea because it is difficult to go for that and also we require only one test pattern to test the fault. Okay, then you can argue also in that test, uh, in that idea that if you require one pattern to do that and pattern to do testing, then if you have the exhaustive test patterns for all the faults, then you can take the best one out of it. Like you can find out one pattern which is detecting the maximum number of faults, you keep that, then you take the next pattern which is detecting the next maximum number of faults and keep that and so on. So, this can be done only if you have exhaustive test pattern generation algorithm. But again that algorithm is exponential in time and it will land up into years if you have a circuit with hundreds of inputs. So, that is why 
exhaustive test pattern generation can be done by functional correctness based testing and generally is not used because of higher complexity. So, we go for basically single pattern that is for a given fault which I try to find out a single pattern which can detect it and there can be two way of doing it one is called the random test pattern generation basically uh, that is which is that is uh, sequential, concurrent, deductive, serial which we have already seen in the last module. So, basically what is the idea that we generate a random pattern and then find out how many faults can be detected by the random pattern and then we repeat this one till all the faults are detected or actually we have keep on or we have completed detecting the easy to test faults. Then you have to go for something which is called sensitized propagate and justify approach. So, there is another name for that which is actually called deterministic automatic sorry ATPG. So, deterministic automatic test pattern generation algorithm. Why do we call it deterministic? Because we take our fault then we sensitize propagate and justify it and we generate the fault. So, that is why sensitized propagate and justify approach is called deterministic test pattern generation. So, and what is random? In random we just apply a test pattern and find it. So, deterministic test pattern generation can be two, there can be many. So, we are just going to look into two. So, one is sensitized propagate and justify approach which is the most widely ap applied approach and we always I mean most of the algorithms which are using test pattern ATPG use sensitized propagate and ju justify approach which is also called pass sensitized appro approach and there are several others, but there is another one which is called the symbolic difference. So, quickly we will have a review of and see what introduced that what is symbolic difference uh, based uh, or deterministic test pattern generation and then we will just have a look why it is not used what is the difficulty in practical difficulty in doing it. But when you are learning about different type of uh, automatic test pattern generation algorithm we should just have a variety we should just know a variety of automatic test pattern generation available in the deterministic class because for the random class we have seen four like serial, concurrent, deductive and uh, so, sequential uh, sorry parallel concurrent directive and random kind of a thing. So, four test pattern algorithms four random test pattern generation algorithms we have seen. So, for the deterministic one the most uh, widely accepted is the path sensitization which is sensitized propagate and justify approach, but still we have to just look a variety of what is other options available. So, among that symbolic difference is one which we are going to see, but is unlike I mean just like we have seen for your uh, what you call this random test pattern generation the most widely accepted are concurrent and deductive ones because they can I mean generate very quick quickly or random very quickly they can analyze your circuit in one go or sometimes if you have a highly parallel architecture then we can go for parallel in that manner seri serial fault simulations are not generally used. Similarly, in this case path sensitization is most widely used and symbolic difference symbolic difference based ATPG is not that widely accepted or what or widely used. We will see why I mean just give an idea, but to know the spectrum of test algorithms we are just having a look at it. So, basically if you look by symbolic difference based testing comes from a well known Shannon's expression. So, what is Shannon's expression? If you have a function like this f of x 1, x 2 and x 3 what wherever all these x 1, x 2, x 3 are Boolean variables and it is a Boolean function binary variables you can say then we can write it as x 1 prime that is x 1 complement in dot f of this value we have to make it 0 plus this is x 1 then we have to make this as 1 and we can go for this expansion and this can be done in a recursive manner. We all know that this is nothing but Shannon's expansion. So, Boolean uh, symbolic difference based uh, deterministic ATPG works on Shannon's expression. So, let us take a block diagram of a circuit. So, it has some n inputs and it has some m outputs. So, say there is a stack at f for the output. So, how to do that? So, if you go for the sensitized propagate and justify approach that is the other. So, what we will say that if it is a stack if it is a stack at 0 4 then we have to apply a 1 then you have to propagate this effect. So, 0 and a 1. So, it is actually d prime normal case 0 fault case 1 if you stack at sorry you apply a 1 sorry stack at 0. So, normal case 1 fault case it is a 0. So, the, it will be a d and this effect of d has to be propagated at some output. So, once it is the value of d is propagated at this output some output then you try to justify this one that is actually sensitized propagate and justify that is your uh, path sensitization based ATPG. Now, we will see what is the I mean the other which is symbolic difference that is based on Boolean I mean that is based on Shannon's expansion. So, that we will see the so, same diagram we can explain both of them. So, uh, what is that? So, let us uh, so first what you do you first find out in case of uh, symbolic difference based you first find out the value of this net because this is nothing but a net where the fault has occurred you find out a value of this net in terms of this one. So, we call it g this is a function g uh, this is a function because say for example, there is a lot of combination in clouds uh, they are the inputs and this net is having a stack at 0 fault which we are calling f or something like that. Then we define the function of this one without the fault that is g of i 1 to i n. Obviously, because say this net is dependent on all these inputs you can say and if some inputs are not dependent on this then the value of this one will be x I mean it can be anything, but uh, we can easily define the value of this net where this fault is there in terms of 
these inputs. Okay, so that is what they are saying. Say for example, f of f in this be the function of the Boolean value f net this one in terms of all the inputs. Now fault is not there. Now if you want then we know that this is actually the sorry. Now we know that uh, this is the value of g of all the primary inputs will give you the value of this special specialized net g of all the primary inputs will give the value of f. Now if you say that uh, we can say that the value of some of these f i uh, what is f i? f i actually corresponds to the i th output then we can say write that f i is equal to g plus i 1 plus i 2 dot by with the function of the output lines this one at under failure at point f. So, now in each without the failure, so what is the function? The function is f of i, i1, i2 dot i n with the function of the output line O i. Okay, so, it will be 1 to n as there, so we have n, m, m, m outputs are there. So, we have how many functions? f1, f2, f3 dot 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 f of m and what are the and the function depends on variables i1 to i n without the fault. But now if there is a fault at the line net, cap, net capital F, then you have to also introduce g that is the, because now the output is affected not only by this, but is also affected by this one. So, now uh, what you write, now there is a small notation we are using. So, no notation is that f of i of g is some notation. So, it is basically nothing, but uh, this, is the, say this is the function we are having f of i. So, this is the, the partial derivative of this function with respect to g that is what we are doing. So, partial derivative what we are doing is, so we know that now the output function say some output over this one, some output say O m. So, it is out this function is f of m into g because it output of m, output O m now depends on not only the primary input, but also on the fault. So, we write g and then only we can write i 1 dot 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 i n. So, this is how you can define the fun output m function. Okay. Now, if we say that we differentiate this one partially with respect to f of g, that is we are differentiating this output with G. So, that means we are trying to find out whether there is any difference in O m with respect to the fault or not because we are going for a differentiation. So, we are what we are going to write? We are going to write is this one as f of i that is i th output with respect to g then we write it as f of i this one we apply a 1 and this one we apply a 0. Basically what we are doing? So, this uh, partial differentiation we are saying that and we are doing an XOR. So, we are saying that with, is there any effect of this fault on this line effect? We are going to study that is what is the partial differentiation meaning that whether this uh, fault this fault is any effect on this net or not. So, when you can have an effect if this is 1 then let us say the let us say the, the output is O m 1 and then if the answer is 0 over here let us say that O m 0 O m this is the value of the output let us assume that way that if it is 1 then the answer f is 1 then it is O m O m 1 and uh, otherwise it is 0 O m 0. Now, to detect this fault at this net, if you do an XOR between them, then the answer should be 1. That is, they should be different. In other words, if the, if, the, if this net or what do you call, if this fault have an output, if this fault is to have an effect on this output or if, for the matter any of the output, then if it is 0, whatever value say x and if the value is 1, then the x output value should be x prime or it can be other way around also that is x prime and x. So, that is if there is a change from 0 to 1 in this net the output this output should also reflect it. If it is the case then only the fault is detected at the output otherwise the fault is not detected at the output. So, if the value is 0 or 1 whatever may be the case here the output remains the same this output remains the same then it implies that this net has no effect this output has no effect in the fault and this thing cannot be used for detecting the fault. So, we write this is the partial derivation that f of i I 1 that is 1 at the fault position and all the inputs XOR this one should be basically this is what is the partial differentiation and if you want to detect the fault at that net then the answer should be 1. So, now let us say this. So, this is the definition of the partial derivative that means it is trying to find out whether there is any difference or whether any difference at the output i for this fault at net g that is it is want to find out if there is any uh, voltage change at net g whether there is any effect at the output of net sorry at the output of net i output i that is what is the definition. Now, for detecting a stack at 0 fault at f what we have to do? Obviously, we have to apply we are going to detect a stack at 0 fault here. So, what we have to do? We have to going to stack at 0 fault here. So, we have to apply a 1 over here. So, what we have to do is very simple. So, first thing is that apply a 1. So, how do we apply a 1? So, g of i 1 dot 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 
i n should be equal to 1 because this inputs only control this. So, we write something like this g of f of i 1 to i n equal to 1 this is the first condition that has to be satisfied. And then what you have to satisfy? Then you have to satisfy that at least one output at least at least one output should be there where this because one we have applied and this fault is 0. So, 1 0 that is equal to d now we have, have got a d. So, there should be at least one output where this d value is propagated can be propagated or in other words there should be at least one output where this effect is propagated. So, how do you know that the effect is propagated? We have to find out that any net any output should be sensitive, sensitive uh, what you call uh, can be sensitized or is sensitive to this change and how do you know this change? So, we have to write this one as f of j there actually they are saying that there exists at least 1 j between i to m that is at least 1 j from between 1 to m that is at least one output where this it is sensitizable sensitized where the output is sensitized if you put a 1 over there and a stuck at fault is there. So, if you put a 1 that means it is the normal case and this is the output at the uh, output at o j ok if there is the stuck at 0 fault and this is the normal case because output is now dependent on the primary input as well as the value at f. So, value of f is stuck at 0 means this is the fault case the output value is 1 that means it is the normal case ok. Now, you have to we are saying that that is the partial differentiation of f i with the fault. So, it is saying that there exists at least out one output where if the uh, fault that is at least there is at least one output for which the fault effect is sensitizable. That is f of j that is for j the output if you apply a 1 in the fault location and all the primary inputs XOR with if you have a 0 at that fault location and you apply this some primary input the answer is 1. That means, uh, the output is output j is different with fault uh, compared to normal. Okay. So, it says that if this is the case then the fault is detected. Now, what is the test pattern? all the variables that is satisfying these equations are the test pattern. So, you are going to get a exhaustive test pattern for this thing and in fact that is what I told you that exhaustive test pattern this is nothing but the complexity of this algorithm is 2 to the power n and this is something equivalent to all uh, means fully functional testing using uh, 2 to the power n type of inputs and finding out whether it is a difference. So, that is why because of this high complexity of boolean is not a very efficient for large circuits. So, therefore, we do not go. Now, let us just see what they are saying for the stuck at 1 fault. So, if there is a stuck at 1 fault you have to detect at f then what you have to do this is stuck at 1 fault then you have to apply a 0. So, f of at this function this function is actually f of f say that is g what you call. So, in this case you have to apply a 0. So, by controlling the primary inputs in such a way so that this g that is the fault location should have the value 0. Now, again what is the next case? The next case says that there should be at least one output j between i and m such that it is sensitized sensible to this effect that is the stuck at 1 you apply a 0 normal case 0 fault case 1 stuck at 1 we are applying a 0 which is nothing but d prime. So, this d prime effect should be available at at least some output f j and how do you represent this? So, stuck at 1 so this represents fault and 1 this represents normal and this value should be out different at the output. Why? Because this g is 1 here and this g is 0 over here and this controls these are the primary inputs. So, now we, which variables will satisfy the equation or which combination of vari variables will satisfy the equation? All variables all combinations of i 1 to i n which actually satisfy this equation and this equation will be a test pattern for that socket 1 fault. Now, again I mean the exhaustive number of test patterns can I mean what you can call satisfy these equations. So, this is actually a very high complex algorithm and therefore, we do not need even if it can do satisfy automatic test pattern generation algorithm by uh, what you call a deterministic approach, but still you do not take it because, more, because it is more or less equivalent to functional testing which is exponential order complexity. So, now we will go for the approach which is widely used for test pattern generation which is called path sensitization based ATPG or which we are continuously calling as path sensitize propagate and justify. So, what do you mean by path sensitization already I told you that if there is a stuck at fault we have to drive it to the opposite value. This is just like there is an electric bulb then you have put it is fuse. So, you have to make it you have to give power on so that it goes to value 1 that is it tries to glow ok. And then if the bulb is if, if for example, say that the bulb cannot be switched off it is always on then what you have to do you have to try to switch off the bulb then the bulb if, if it continues glowing then you can know that basically it is a stuck at 1 fault or the bulb is always on kind of a fault. So, for to detect a fault you have to always sensitize that is you have to give the reverse value of the fault. 
Now, then is, is called the fault propagation. That is, the fault effect has to be set into a you know, primary output because in case of testing, we know that we can only control the primary inputs and observe the primary output. Intermediate lines we cannot control. So, the effect has to be, uh, uh, effect has to be uh, gone to some primary output where it can be observed, right. And the line justification means because all these steps we are doing manually, I mean, all these steps, sorry, all these steps we have done require some kind of, I mean, all these steps like false, false sensitization and fault propagation, all these things has to be controlled by the primary inputs. So, now you have to justify that this uh, synthesization propagation can be done by appropriately setting the primary input lines because we cannot control the internal nets. In this case, signals are the internal nets or some primary inputs which I mean uh, which assigned for false propagation justify are justified by setting the primary inputs of the line that is what is being said. So, what we say? We say that uh, in this step the signals are the internal nets or primary outputs which were assigned in these two steps. Like for false sensitization, what was the assignment? The assignment was if the stack at 0 fold, we apply a 1 and if it is a stack at 1 fold, we apply a 0. So, that, that internal nets we set some voltage. Like false propagation, that means we set some primary input, sorry, some internet in, in, internal lines so that the output effect or the fault effect is propagated to the output. So, we set some signals values in this circuit in some way and false line justification will say that yes, that can be done by appropriately setting the primary input. So, we will see with an example. So, uh, that it is how is it possible. So, what do you mean by that? So, that is actually called line justification. So, once it can be justified, then you are very happy because sensitized propagate and justify has been done, your fault value has been appropriate the output, uh, prime fault effect has been propagated the output and you can observe it. But, we are always saying that this is straightforward false sensitized propagate justify, false sensitized propagate and justify, but life is not very simple because always or many times you can have conflict that is a conflict that you have gone for false synthesis, you have gone for fault propagation, but there is no, no primary input combination which can satisfy false synthesis and propagation. Then you have to go for alternate path and so that we will see by an example. So, that is why it is a very difficult thing. So, like that what we have emphasized is that in case of right now we are just going to going back a few slides or a previous lecture. What we say that in random test pattern generation, our answers are very simple. We propagate the circuit in we or we, send, uh, we traverse the circuit in one direction and we get the re result in case of deductive or concurrent. That is one uh, full scan of the circuit, we can find out this pattern detects can how many faults. Similarly, if we say that synthesize, propagate and justify can find out your faults. That is once you synthesize, you propagate and justify, then that is also one scan of the circuit. Then why do you are going for random test pattern generation? So, one advantage of random test pattern is that we have seen that they say that in one pattern you can detect uh, multiple faults that can be detectable by the pattern. But at the same time, it is also said that this uh, random test pattern requires one scan of the circuit. So, uh, similarly, we can also question that synthesize, propagate and justify also does one scan of the circuit. You synthesize, you propagate and you justify, but life is not very simple. Many times we have to go for iteration. That is, you synthesize the fault, propagate its value at the output, then you find out that this cannot be justified. That there are no primary input combinations which can justify synthesize and propagate step. So, again you have to find out some other paths or alternative mechanisms to do that, but this problem of backtrack is not there in random test pattern generation. So, we now see a example then things will be more clear that what do you mean by backtracking. So, have had backtracking not been there then always we could we could have totally thrown away this random test pattern generation and we could have gone for the path sensitization or synthesis propagate and justify approach at least from the complexity point of view. So, let us see. So, let us consider this circuit as an example. So, let us take that there is a stack at 0 fault at this one. So, if there is a stack at 0 fault, so we have to apply a 1. So, we say that we apply a 1 over here. So, apply a 1 over here. So, normal case 1, fault case 0. That is actually nothing but D. So, now we are going by the Ross algebra. So, we have to write, we do not write 1 slash 0, we write basically D. Now, the value, now this is, now this is sensitized. 1 and uh, for 0 I have put a 1. Now, you have to find out a path through which this value can be propagated to the output. So, you can see this is one path okay, and there is also another path through this one. So, you can take any one path or sometimes also we can try both the path together. So, let us for the time being first try with this path. So, what is the path? Path is E, F, G and H. This is the path. Okay. So, now let us try to see the path. So, that is now since you now we have to propagate it. So, the value of D we are going to get here and gate. So, this is not a non-inverting gate, this one the value will be there. So, this again we are propagating this is path, this OR gate and NAND gate are non-inverting gate. So, D will be propagated. Now, you can see that this is an inverting gate NAND gate. So, the value will be D prime over here. So, anyway both D and D prime can detect the faults because D means normal case 1, fault case 0, D prime means normal case 0, fault case 1. 
So, both of them can detect the faults. So, in either D prime. So, we are happy with it. So, this is called the fault propagation. Now, sensitize is done, fault propagation is done. Now, we have to justify that this setting of the lines that is this propagation and this sensitization is possible. So, in this case the sensitization is very easy it is possible just by setting b equal to 1 because the primary input fault. So, you can easily do that that means what sensitization is done. Now, we have to see that whether propagation is possible through the primary inputs. Okay, so, this is d prime. So, you have to obviously put a 1 over here because if you put a 0 over here then in the land gate output is 0 then all the problems all the whatever effort you are doing is lost. So, you put a 0 over here. Now, this is 0, this is OR gate. So, obviously, you have to put a 0 in case of a NAND gate because if the OR gate input is 1, then the output will be 1 and OR effort is lost, right. So, now you put a 0 over here. Now, if you want to put a 0 at the output of the AND gate, then what you have to do? So, if you, uh, what, if you want to get the output of the NAND gate as a 0, so this is actually 1. So, if you want to get the output of NAND gate 0, then you should have 1 input as 1 and this input as 1, correct. And what do you call and this gate is D, this is D, so A equal to 1. But now you see that we have got a big conflict over here. We get to get the answer as 0 over here, we need a 1 over here as well as 1 over here. But this net is basically D because of the fault and this net is D. So, we require a 1, but actually D is being applied. So, this actually leads to a conflict and we have to try for an alternative path. So, that is why I told you that although we are from, we are telling from the first lecture on was the sensitized propagate and justify, sensitized propagate and justify is a very good algorithm because for difficult to test faults you can find out the patterns, but life is not very simple because sensitized propagate justify there is something called failure, sensitized propagate justify failure iterate, sensitized propagate justify failure iterate, you have to keep on doing it till we get an answer or sometimes the fault may, we may land up and think that the fault is non-testable. Okay. So, this is one option is gone. Now, what is the next option? The next option is we have to try this another alternative path that we can try from this one, correct. So, let us see the alternative path. Now, D is there, <coughs> it is an inverting gate. So, you get a inverting over here. This, now, this is the path because these are in a propagation path, sensitize already is done that was successful. So, now again D prime because this is a non inverting gate. This is a non inverting gate, correct. So, these are non inverting gates. So, again d prime now this is an inverting gate. So, you get the value of t over here. Now, let us see how can we justify this. So, in this case you have to propagate the value of this one to this one. So, this is d to d prime. So, d prime to d because the inverting gate. So, you put the value of 1 because this is the controlling value. So, non controlling value for a NAND gate. Now, you can see uh, this d prime has to be propagated over here. So, or gate. So, you have to get the value of 0 over here, correct. And this is also a d that you have to know because this is a d because stuck at 0 and 1, but to get the output 0 at the end gate you put a, a equal to 0. So, you are done. So, now this path sensitize propagate and justify everything is satisfied. So, let us see what we have satisfied right now. So, sensitization you stuck at 0 1, so you apply a 1. So, that is fantastic sensitization is successful. Now, you have to propagate the value through this output. So, you have propagated this one. Now, we get a 0 sorry we need a 1 over here. Now, OR gate, so the, the something is propagated, so you get a 0 over here, you need to apply a 0 over here because it is non controlling input for OR gate. And for AND gate, if you want to take the output as 0, you apply a 0. So, the pattern A equal to 0, B equal to 1, C equal to 1, and D equal to 1 is the test pattern to detect the fault. So, what is the test pattern? A equal to 0, B equal to 1, C equal to 1, and D equal to 1, and output is D, that is normal case 1, failure case 0. This is the test pattern which detects a stuck at 0 fault ever. So, we have found out a test pattern to detect this fault, but we have to remember here that it has come with a cost of iteration. So, sometimes there can be multiple iterations that you can fail in both the paths, then you have to try to propagate the effect to both the paths together and we may have to try keep on doing it till we are exhausted and we found that there is no more alternative path to do it, then you have to declare that the fault is a non-testable fault. So, you can understand that to detect a state stuck at 1 fault or stuck at 0 fault by sensitize propagate and justify approach, so many times you may have to iterate through the algorithm because you may have sensitize propagate just justify failure, sensitize propagate justify failure and keep on trying alternative path. That is why we always go for sensitize propagate and justify approach only when we fail by random test pattern generation. Because in random test pattern generation sometimes we may not detect some faults and we have to stop, I mean we have to draw and we have to retry those faults, but this is not a direct clear concept of iteration. That is we apply a random pattern, some easy to test faults are detected, some are not detected, we take them for the next round and keep on doing it. So, in a in a broader sense in sense random test pattern generation there is no concept of iteration 
as bold as in bold quote unquote which is there in sensitive propagator and justifier. Therefore, only for difficult first we try this approach. Now, let us go for a question answer session. So, we have a fault over here that is the stuck at fault over here. Now, this is circuit. Now, we try to generate a uh, test pattern for that using sensitive propagator and justify approach. So, if it is stuck at 0, so you apply a 1 correct. So, uh, uh, correct you apply a 1. So, normal case 1 you can get the fault case to be a 0 over here right. So, in this case uh, normal uh, value is 1 fault value is 0. So, actually sorry the answer is a not a d prime it is d ok, uh, because uh, you have sensitization you have to do you apply a 1 then 1 and the normal case fault case is 0. So, it is a d over here sorry for sorry for the typo it is d. So, now is a non inverting gate. So, you also get the answer as this one correct. So, you stuck at 0 you apply a 1 this is the value. So, this is nothing but d and then it is a non inverting gate. So, you get the answer as d over here. So, this is the propagation path because there is only one propagating path in this case there is no other fan out here. So, there is only one path where you can propagate the value. So, that is what we have done d and d over here. Now, let us see what happens. So, I am sorry uh, let us again redraw it is 1 d answer is d. So, it is an OR gate we know that we have to get a value of 0 correct. So, this is the value of 0 over here because we have to now we have proper I mean uh, sensitized and uh, stuck at 0 we apply a 1 this sensitization that is d. Now, value is propagated to here and we are justifying it whether this path is possible through what you can call the uh, I mean uh, primary a combination of primary. So, it is 0. So, it is very correct that you have to apply a 0 over here for R gate. So, applying getting a 0 over here implies that b is equal to 0. So, b is equal to 0 implies that this is a 0 over. So, we land into a conflict, but to state a stuck at 0 fault we require a 1 over here, but again to propagate it we require a 0 over here and it is again a 0 over here. So, this is a conflict. So, now you can see that this is a big problem over here because there is no other alternate path for the circuit. So, this fault is an untestable fault. So, uh, sometimes it may happen that in this case there is only one fan out. So, we, we have uh, in one iteration we stopped and found out that the fault cannot be detected, but for a general case we may it may happen that there is a large number of alternative paths and for none of them the answer is successful. So, you always you have to go for sensitive propagate justify failure, sensitive propagate justify failure you keep on doing it for some hundredth option possible and then you find out that the fault is non detectable and how we are algorithm has taken a lot of time and we are in a bad situation. Now, let us just analyze for very quickly why this fault is not detectable. So, faults are not detectable only if there is some redundancy in this circuit. Like in this case what is the function? This function is a dot b at this point and it is and this one is actually a dot b this a dot b and this or plus b. So, this is nothing but b into a plus 1 kind of a thing. So, this is nothing but b correct a plus 1 is 0. So, this net is nothing but actually a straight line called b. So, these are this circuit has lot of redundancy. So, if you actually optimize this circuit you will find that a is equal to nothing but b. So, that is nothing but this is your circuit. So, because of this some if there is some redundancy in this circuit and fault those those lines cannot be detected. But sometimes we do require have to have redundancy in the circuit to match clock skews and several other design paradigms. So, all those redundant parts if there is a fault those faults cannot be detected. But our ATPG algorithm if like sensitized and, and basically they are the culprits those uh, what do you call those uh, redundant parts are actually the uh, mean black nightmares for the testing people or the test engineers. Because if there is a redundancy in the circuit neither random test pattern can detect those faults. So, they will be classified as difficult to test pattern like we have seen in the squab algorithm that because of some redundancy in the circuit that the squab value should was 6, but actually it should be infinity because that fault cannot be tested. So, anyway squab will classify them as a difficult to test fault because squab will never give the value infinity kind of a thing because of the heuristic or I mean what you call the because of some redundancy or because of some, some simplicity we have kept in the algorithm to make it a quick algorithm. So, that you get the answer fast. So, squab will give a very high value, but it will never say infinity. So, it is a difficult to test fault and if you, you keep on trying sensitized propagate and justify approach and every time you will be failing. So, in this case this example circuit there was only one fan out path. So, you have just tried in one go and you have failed and you have not and you did not go for iteration because there is no other option, but for a general circuit there can be lot of options. But all the options are definitely bound to fail. Now, why they are bound to fail? Because they are redundant circuits and those faults cannot be tested. So, you will keep on doing sensitive propagation justify and keep on failing and in the end what you are going to do is that you are going to declare that the fault is not testable, but by that time you have taken lot of your 
uh, what computation time. So, that is not a very good approach of doing it. So, now, so this comes to end of the basics of ATPG and ATPG algebra and how we can generate test patterns using sensitized propagator and justify approach. In the next lecture, we are going to take ATPG that is actually the sensitized propagator and justify approach by a very well known algorithm which is called the D algorithm. So, we will see formally how D algorithm is used to go for sensitized propagation and justify approach based test pattern generation. So, that we will be looking up into the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.